David Gilbert on Scatology to speak some. Gilbs. Shit. Shit. Scat. What's scat? Scat. Do you scat? Oh, man. What's Brandon Sticky? <clears throat> scat. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah, cat shit. And can you, can, you, can, I mean, you, can you talk shit? Oh. That's the question. Yeah, I can that's shoot that's shit all that. you can shoot with great shit. accuracy at a three to seven foot range, depending on my feckles. Holy shit. Yeah. No, I shoot shit. I manufacture shit. Once a day. What does that mean? Well, once a day, I... I once a day as well. Do you? You're regular. In the morning. Yeah, me too. Mm. Like, I'm not that regular, but like, I, um, I do have a high oat diet. I, I, um, <clears throat> I'm an advocate of this. So, what's the texture? What's the texture? As in porridge. Oh, of my... Of your shat. Sh stools. Yeah. Well, I would say light, fluffy... Oh wow! I'm Light, jealous. fluffy, and pleasingly um, aromatic. Well, yeah, to me, but Shit. like, um, maybe not necessarily to everyone, but like, um, <laughs> not always. Like, I have well, occasional no, disasters. You can't, there's no such thing as a universal smell, right? A universal smell. I guess there isn't. Mm. But like, roses? Um, yeah, no, roses my stools. Are roses like, are a universal smell. Now that we're smell. focused in on a topic that's of great Scat. interest to me. Mm. Yeah, maybe. maybe, maybe Maybe to other people less so. Oh, but I, I doubt that. I think more people no, like it than you realise. I am an advocate of oats, and I'm glad we've got off onto this. Um, start. Mm -hmm. start. Have you guys start. noticed that, like in <clears throat> present day medical advice, there's much more emphasis on a gut biota? Health. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Biome. The biome. Yeah. Precisely. Mm -hmm. There's a thousand times or something like that of uh, as much. Genetic material. Yeah, that's in, right, man. Um, your gut, gut biome. Yeah, than than there right. is in your own um, digestive processes of the cells that are supposedly part of you. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, I've um, heard this. Keep yeah. going. Keep going. This is really cool. There is a universe in offer, the stomach. offer 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 us precisely. Some yeah, a universe in the stomach. Mm -hmm. I've heard I've heard some scientists refer to it as our second brain. Yeah, That's, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, there are links between, um, supposedly, this is all new, supposedly between your mental mood. Yeah, your, I've heard that too. Gut, That's your right. Gut health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. You are what you eat. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm an advocate of oats. They're very cheap. I just bought, on the way here, I bought uh, three 750 gram packs of oats from Woolies. They cost a dollar forty each. Hmm. So that was two and a quarter litres by volume mm. of oats for a mere $1.40 times three. Three. Uh, four, less than $5. 420 four twenty. Four twenty. yeah. 420 there you go. And now, now oats, um, many things you can do with them. Do you but, make porridge? Is that your main well, thing? Well, porridge. Porridge is not my main thing because I like the texture of oats. So I will tend to make a bircher muesli. This is sounding super fucking what boring. What does that mean? A muesli. muesli. What's that? Well, it's like you grate an apple and you oh, mix yeah, it okay. through your oats. Yeah, okay. My, my, I think my grandma used to put applesauce on yeah. my oats. I don't like oats. I can't eat it. I really can't. Really? No, I can't eat it. Are you no. a gluten dude? No, no. It just, it's gotten to the point I've had too much of it and I can't stand it. I really can't could stand it. could be a gluten thing, well, man, because they are high in gluten. No, no, let's Maybe, explore this. No, so, it's what, more that if is I... It porridge? If I, yeah, porridge. Blech. I understand that. I can understand your objection to porridge. So you do an oat. What's your oats? What's different then? Well, I just had too much as a kid. Don't eat it anymore, but I ate it every day. Sorry, Dave. Yeah, no, I get that. What, what I would say is that the porridge is... Very limited appeal to me, mm. like that um, texture of this sort of thing. And to be honest, like um, the birch muesli, which I'm about to sell to you, and this is not like I. Um, What's your why? Why do you want to sell birch muesli? Because it's done wonders for me, and I only want good things for the world. No other reason. Oh, do you grow muesli Bang. from scratch? There you go. No, uh, no. The way he makes. His I have muesli. investigated. Ordering organically grown 
oats from like farmers. Growing it. You can buy five no. kilos at a time of a steel rolled oat from an organic farmer way out west. I've and I haven't quite made the plunge. Mm. Today, for example, I went to Woolies and bought the very cheap oats. Mm-hmm. Like, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I know you garden. Dollar forty a pack. And so, well, one, what's one, this birch of muesli? I'm really keen to know. Oh, okay. Now, this is way up on porridge. And like, so what you do is you grate an apple through your oats. Mm-hmm. And the acids in the apple break the oats down. Make it more digestible. available. Yeah, digestible. Okay. But it's not all about being immediately digestible. Mm-hmm. What's great about oats is it passes through your tract and like um, for a very long time, and that is part of its charm, that it gives your digestive tract opportunities to promulgate your gut biome mm. in order to break it down, and your stools are soft. Stools. And they, stools, we are talking scatology, sh- they're straight, lots of fiber. You'll get a stool of, of, of you know, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, museum quality. Wow. <laughs> Do, is this something that you make yourself? It's a true pleasure. This well, I make my own birch muesli. I've never even heard of birch It's just some Swiss um, nutritionist. Like, if you want to get birch-a? it. Called Yes. Okay. And, it, and, and the yogurt is an oh, yeah. aspect of it. Sure, sure. And so, like, I will add, like... Um, Chop nuts and I really feel self-conscious now. Yeah, but I, I do think. actually believe in this as like a way forward. Mm-hmm. This is a way forward for me. It, right. It, the, our links to your serotonin levels. Um, so I didn't have my birch and muesli this morning. I intended to. I intended to come around and be really effusive with my banter because I'd be like riding high because of my birch and muesli intake. But it didn't happen. What I did have was... Um, Bear. Two cans of Bear. overproof rum. Oh, right. But like, yeah, um, yeah. Oh, like that's a good breakfast. I had so wine for are breakfast. Are you saying that your your diet breakfast, lunch, and dinner for a little while, and then you've gone onto a new diet, and now you feel better? Yeah, yeah. Is you could you could put it that way, pretty much. Like I I what did you used to eat. I endorse this diet. What did I used to eat? Mm. Shit. I mean, I'd just wake up and like have a joint and a coffee, I suppose. And, oh, uh, okay, right, right, right. You know, if yeah, I was financial, it? maybe some sort of, like, bacon and eggs or something, you know. Like, if I was hungover. Or, like, toast and Vegemite, which is also pretty bloody good. Mm? Yeah. But, yeah, this birch and muesli. So, yeah, I could crap on it a bit some more. But I do recommend it. But you grow as well. You're telling me about that. What, what, I, uh, what do I, you grow? You know what? I don't grow as much as I ought to. I grow... What do you grow? I grow sage. sage? It's probably the most yeah, ongoing nice. concern. I'm a fan of sage. Cool. Uh, yep. Big fan. Sage was one of the first things put in. Hmm. I put very things in. Parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme. Because I want to... I, what I want to grow... I want Like the first thing I grew... Was tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tomatoes. That was the first thing I grew. Oh, was the next lyric? Yeah, definitely grew tomatoes. Do tomatoes. And, now, and now I've got um, I reckon in the chilli that you gave me, the chilli seeds that you gave me, and the capsicum that Casper Sound Out Studios proprietor gave me. He, say, he and Rachel Clark saved me some capsicum seeds. Mm. So I got capsicum on the go too. Mm. It's a good time for capsicum. Tomatoes, you can't oh, stop. I've heard. As long as you I water them properly. Them. Can't stop tomatoes. Yes, well, you can. They just die. Even three-year-olds. Can you can't. They, they die, but then they self-seed and they just yeah. keep going. But like, marijuana. The thing that annoyed the thing that annoyed me about growing tomatoes is like, yep, I got some really luscious fruit, but then it died. And yeah, so it was just like a month, yeah, a month of growing this plant. I'm like, I didn't even get the chance to cultivate this thing. But Fuck. they come back. Fuck that. They, they come, come back, back as long as yeah. you weed. They come back. No oh, man, my my. Oh, okay. As long as you weed, that and don't eat every single fruit. That Let could be the problem. A nice one, drop and shrivel on the ground. Ah, oh, yeah, right. Or so just grab save some the more best and for the ground. Throw them. Or one of the best ones. Just yeah. buy yeah. tomatoes that yeah. you enjoy, right? And then leave a third of them, and then just smush them into the ground, and then you'll have 
More tomatoes oh. in no time. All oh, right. Like forest, man. Well, um, forest. Jobby was telling me that um, cherry tomatoes are probably a good idea for me yep. as a total yeah. novice. They're the most hardy. Fruitarian. Yep. Mm. Also, the great thing about cherry tomatoes is that they'll produce, say on a given morning, you might produce, it might, you might have like a couple of metres of cherry tomatoes, but like it will produce like two or three cherry tomatoes that day. It's not like you're waiting for a oh. week and it makes one big one and you oh, go, so yay, cool. family, we've got like a... Yeah, they're always on bar, the go. They're always on the go, yeah, that's so you pretty can cool. continually harvest them. They're almost mm. like nuts. And the thing about um, fruit... Macadamias or something. The thing about comestibles in general, like... Um, the waddy wats Things that you grow for food, like... Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, things that have been oh, yeah, cultivated yeah. for human consumption. For real. Because like, the tomato is like uh, clearly a crop that's been... Adapted much Bread. like anything you name, like the, mm. the apple. What, mm -hmm. They've mm -hmm. all been because uh, the apple used to yeah, be what's this. That word? It used to be manzana. The Australian native yeah. apple is tiny. Yeah. Like all, 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 all these things started off as very Dark. small, bitter things, yeah. and then over time have been bred, yeah, become more okay. palatable and That's sugary. You, right. That's so exactly why you some, the biggest one. Some it, Homo sapien stumbled across this plant, mm. tried it, mm. didn't die. Mm -hmm. And then said, "How can I make that taste better?" It's probably yeah. <laughs> well, and the, well, then they've gone and cropped or planted near their place, and it's cropped up, and the, they've picked the nicer ones. And over time, the, mm -hmm. the nicer ones have come through. Mm. And so, what you, one of the interesting things that I first learned as a gardener was that the plants that you're planting enjoy being picked. Right, you essentially. They what? enjoy being eaten. Oh, there's a reason for that. They, 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 they're, because they are in um, a symbiosis with us. Mm. You understand? Like, that they... Mm -hmm. Oh, because well, they've been... We, especially fruit. Humans, as they, humans, it's like we've bred the plants that like getting picked. Yes. Yeah. And Oh, the, man, you, that's fucking mind-blowing. Because the Please. more that we pick them, the more likely they are to... Have their seeds propagate. See, they exactly. grow the fruit as like a compensation for us planting the seed again. So it's 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 very oh, much a win-win. Wow. Well, I would argue that the fruit itself is assuming that you're going to eat it and shit out the seeds. Precisely. Okay. Okay. Then, okay, then, okay, then, okay. Or a bird for originally, but, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but um, well, we came but along yeah, and did we, it a little bit better. We do it a bit differently. Or dif differently. <laughs> differently yeah. Is the word. Not better. Yeah. We don't plant yeah. our own shit. No. <laughs> oh well, we do, I guess, and then but like um, yeah. and unlike birds, we don't feed our children our own vomit. Mm. Well, only we do it differently. Uh, only in we the north parts of Scotland. Ah, yeah. Scotland is that what they did to you? Did your mum feed you her Orange. own porridge? Yes, her uh, own. Back to my no, favorite no, no, topic. Her own vomit. No, no, I thought that was a Scottish <laughs> thing. No. Hey. Robbie, we haven't That's heard right. enough from you. So, if what, you, hey, what are yeah? your thoughts on porridge? Um, like I said, well, my granny was Scottish. That was breakfast every single day for... Can't do it. ...from the ages of seven through to about ten. So three years of porridge every day. I Ugh. loved it at first. Oh, that makes me feel sick then just I grew thinking out about that. So what was in granny's porridge? Like? Just oats. Just oats boil the oats, add some, oats and water. some honey on top, and you're done. Bit of honey oh, if you're bit lucky. Of milk. Bit of milk. Bit of milk if you're lucky. Mm. If you're lucky. Bit of right milk. Bit but of butter. she made the best porridge butter too. Because it somehow she made it all smooth. Mm. Yeah. Oh you know how you God. get chunky porridge? Ugh, it's I all bad. Oh man. Ugh. But she made it all was of like velvet disgusting. smooth. Love. Mm. Like stirring. That's oh, like when you she, take a shit and it's velvet smooth, or you take a shit and it's floury and soft. In the end, it's all just shit, right? <laughs> just like porridge, it doesn't matter the texture. <laughs> It's no. just shit. <laughs> Runny or chunky with a bit of goddamn Listen, if apple my granny in it. Was still no. here, God bless her. No, I can't, think she I made can't that do it. Yeah, very I much, uh, I think, summed it up. Joe's there. I think that's very like, astute. Astute. And um, pretty much, like, if you got to put a too fine a point on it, like, you've put a, quite a fine point on that process. Yeah. Mm. And then that's the funny thing. It's so, like, we've always known that this stuff is good for us but mm. now we have mm. some sort of 
only in recent times that we have a scientific explanation for it. It's okay. something that we've known already. Oh, yeah, staple food for a long time. But mm. some people are gluten intolerant, so they can't even touch the oats. No, but the oats... It's a recent phenomena too, mm. kind of. Well, actually, the no. that's quite recent, it's, isn't it? It is. It's, it became like a big thing. Years, it became a big maybe? thing almost as quickly as the ADD. Phase. I myself am actually uh, gluten free and tolerant, but like, um, <laughs> um, what I would say, what I would good. say is that like, um, yeah, it's a terrible condition. But mm. like, uh, what I would say is that most varieties of oats are entirely gluten free. And there are some subspecies of oats that have minor levels of gluten. And even within that, there's certain gluten that does affect celiacs and in general. Mm. Now, I would say to this to, to celiacs, and they probably know this already, mm. genuine sufferers of uh, mm. um, and gluten, they, glutenatic disease. They would get um, the run down, yeah, for sure. Oh, like oats are a viable option for many gluten. Oh, okay, really? so, yeah, gluten. Oats are largely gluten free, and like let's just let's just put it on the table that those gluten free folk are not completely pissing into the wind. There's something maybe I'm not for one. I am not gluten intolerant. I'm not intolerant. Mm. Yeah, I'm not intolerant either. This is true. Neither am I. Uh, I mean, I'm intolerant of penicillin. Oh, that's my um, shit. Please heal. Really? Yeah. You can't take antibiotics. What happens to you? I don't get sick. He, sw he swells up. Oh, if yeah. I if I come in contact with antibiotics. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Shit, I'm on antibiotics, man. I'm, I'm I'm on my second week, and I've got really I've got second you carrying thoughts. Carrying it on you? No. Cool. No, I took it before I came. It's not liquid, is it? No, it's a it's a it's a, it's a capsule form. I think capsule you've just cool. created another rule. It's safe. <laughs> Do, Do not, not bring, bring penicillin, penicillin. No. especially the liquid type. <laughs> I don't even know Get how. Airborne. Yeah, yeah. All of a sudden, is, I'm no. a tomato. It's how really does that true. stuff Robbie, work? Robbie's yeah. antibiotics. Are seriously know. allergic to this stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. Like, really? I'm top yeah. Of my wife it changes. You know, the, it changes the shape of his head. If he touches it, it changes the shape of his head. Bit of penicillin, because he just blows up, man. And then the point of contact, right. whether emergency it's his hand room. or... Not yeah, man, exactly. Yeah. Emergency room. That's right. Mm -hmm. Seriously Yeah, I didn't get triaged. It was come right in. Yeah. Mm. We can see your face. Mm -hmm. Come right in. We can see an allergic reaction when Marte we see man. one. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is almost oh inevitable that I've taken up the first half hour talking about oats. Excellent. Well, that's one of our major crops. Well, you brought back mm -hmm. one of my memories. It is one of them. Yeah, granny. I do major appreciate memory. hearing about major your Scottish memory. ma. Good old granny. Yeah, mm. making, making the um, super smooth oats. Mm. Porridge. Would you ever get sultanas in there? Oh, I never really liked sultanas. Really? Yeah. No currants or? And No. And no prunes either. I, no even prunes? It might be a prune thing. I don't know. Mm. I don't know what it is. Yeah, it I'm was not just a big straight up those. oats. Oats. I don't like wine either, so maybe it's a grape thing. Maybe it's just that whole family of stuff yeah. I just don't like. Probably because of the sugar content. I don't know. Mm. So you're not you're not big on sugar. No, 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 not anymore. Anyway. No, absolutely. You get to a certain age and you're like, mm, no, thank you. Especially when you're you know you're on the booze and the weed. You're sort of like sugar is not really like a siren call, is it? I mean. When I find myself eschewing, like, cigarettes and weed and, and booze, then the call for the sugar does come back. Do mm. you guys ever get that? Do you guys ever get, like, oh, you know, I haven't been drinking, I haven't been smoking, I, I want a cake. Well, Do you guys ever get that? That happens to most people. No, I get, like, um, I haven't That's, been smoking, I haven't been drinking, I want to be in a cigarette. Yeah. This, okay, but you maybe haven't... It, that's just changing. Maybe you're not. It's changing up habits. Yeah. When any when anybody changes a habit, they usually take up a, a new one that's different. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Old Re habits, replace a habit replace with another habit. Yeah, yeah. Ideally, a more healthy habit. Ideally, yeah. Mm. Plenty of people go the other way too. And go, yeah. Oh, mm. it it's sounds like a good idea. It's easier to go down. <laughs> Ice it is, is to go problem. up. Ice is the problem yeah. at the moment, isn't it? Easier to go down. Oh. Than ice. Yes, correct. Mm. Ice. Going down. You guys got any? 
I don't. Mm. I don't. I don't have any on me. What? You probably, you could probably got some, some in my system. Oh, right. <laughs> you said ice. Ice, baby. Mm. Yeah. 5.0. Yeah, as I said, it's the... Bad news. That's the fucking problem right now. It's less... Heroin's a big thing in America at the moment, but I think ice is, is a it? much bigger... Yeah. I thought it was fencing. No, no. Heroin's a big problem in America at the moment. Mm. Um, but... In Australia, our equivalent is more the ice epidemic, if you could call it an epidemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is a thing, man. That's I've what's on the I've news been to a lot of country yeah. towns lately, and shit, man. Mm. That's what people do for fun. They all just they're all just not poor sleeping is and not bored. Fun. And yeah, man. But the thing is, if you can if you can smoke ice all fucking day, and then. What do you do for a living? You can say you're an essay. You say no, no. Say you're a blogger. Say you're a blogger, and you just smoke some ice. You can blog all night, man. Who needs sleep? I can do what I'm here for, and then it fucks with your head. Well, maybe you you're a painted decorator. A painted decorator, that kind of thing. I can paint all day. I can decorate all night, <sighs> smoking that goddamn ice. You know, Next because there's you know because there's less the entertainment, right? In these places, there's so there's so there's nothing to do. There's nothing to do. And this get shit sleep, is people. cheap as fuck. Same with heroin. It's cheap, man. Until you get hooked and then you're paying out your nose. Oh, heroin. But with sleep. ice, it's like you can... Yeah. It's, <laughs> get, Let's get some... Yeah, heroin. plenty of sleep. Let's get some heroin. Because, <laughs> like, I for one... Heroin or heroin. I'm with I'm Rob really here. Sure. Like, um, I'm Come sort on. of like, oh, do you want to smoke this stuff? It'll make you stay up for three days. Mm. I'm just sort of like... No, I think I'll just. Ouch. I think go I'm on to my sleep. own tangent then, because I'll just try any anything, because I haven't done it before. Oh, well, that's that's a legit um, approach to life. Just do the old. Well, I'm not I'm not condoning drug use, but just do the old fable, fable um, the old fashioned ones. You know the stuff that the old fashioned ground. ones. Mm. Oh yeah, not made, yeah, yeah. Not well, made in some kind of weed. book with fucking battery. How good's weed and how good are mushrooms? Gotta say. Yeah, weed and mushrooms. Mm. Anyone got yeah, some mushrooms? Yeah, ice. Like I've had it sold to me, but like I'm just like, I actually would rather. I actually don't want to miss one night's sleep at this point in my life. Okay. Like, oh, of course I'll miss a night's sleep. Like I'll take some. I'll take some Emders and drink tequila and have a nice night with. Friends, but I know that I'm paying for it and I just you know and there's a big part of me which sort of says Dave wouldn't you be better off having a sleep yeah you know have, and getting up and then you can have, have some oats and have oh that's MDS is like um you know ecstasy like M MDMA, oh, MDMA. Right. Yep, yep, yep. well something like that you know and like MDMA I'm not quite suspicious of as well really you know, why do you say that oh it just doesn't seem to do what it did for me once. Okay, okay. I mean, and then there's the question of is the substance changed or has the, or is my interaction with the substance changed? Mm. Well, probably probably, more the probably a bit of both, though. A bit well, of both, the perhaps. The question is are you getting it from a psychiatrist or are you getting it from the street? That's true. How good well, no, it's a traditionally drugs? a street drug. Yeah. You know. Pharmaceuticals, no. man. That's where it's at at our age. I guess so. You know what, where it's at? Where's that? Booze. Oh, booze. Every time. Oh, cheers. Mm. Fucking. I don't think you can do better than the that. The principle of fermentation. Also, okay. like, I do enjoy eating marijuana, mm -hmm. I must say. Triple clink. Oh, yes. Okay, sweet. Okay, so we're starting. Mm. What the fuck is that? All of it. Right. Let's just go one solid sound, you guys. You can <laughs> spill half your beer. <laughs> All right, one solid sound. We're starting. Doesn't froth up when it's. Are you happy with that clink? Yeah, I'm happy with the clink. Colonel Clink. Mm. You got the clink right. Unfortunately, the worst thing about Colonel Clink was that his sergeant literally knew nothing. And Jeremy and the Germans. <laughs> We're gonna have another segment in a second. Jeez. That's um, that's middle management and bureaucracy, isn't it? Uh huh. Like, uh -huh. Middle Polish. management. Think middle management always fucks it up. Hogan's clink. Heroes is really a comment. More about middle management than World War Two. I uh, I believe that. I think some of its tropes, some of its angles on World War Two, might have been a bit dismissive. 
of hey, like... Hey, I've, I have a question. I don't remember any of the prisoners in Hogan's Heroes being obviously Jewish. Ah. Where, where was the obvious where were Jew? The Jews? There must have been an obvious Jew. They were Jew. creating the show. Actually, the obvious Jew, this is this is fucking that's brilliant. This is this to me. Camp. This to yeah, oh god, that's right. All the Jews had already been killed before they made before Colonel Clink. Now, anyway, <laughs> this is the joke that I really really like. That Colonel Clink, whoever I can't remember his name, maybe we should ask Jeeves or something. I will while I'm talking. But um so Colonel Clink the actor that played Colonel Clink is Jewish. Oh. Yeah. And they asked him to be the colonel in this show, oh, Hogan's see. Heroes. And he said, well, I'll do it, but only if I can make those Germans look like, look dickheads. like fucking dickheads. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, he did a good job. Did a great job. <laughs> colonel Logan. <laughs> Colonel no, Hogan. Colonel Hogan. In, in reality, though, his nephew was the executive producer. Probably. Uh, well, that's that's nepotism for you, right there. It's reverse nepotism because the nephew Polish gave his uncle a job. Ver, Verna. It's a pretty lighthearted Verna take on the um, Klemperer. What do you call Verna, that? The Verna Holocaust. Klemperer. Yeah. Verna Klemperer. Yeah, it's a light-hearted take on the Holocaust. What? Exactly. Mm. All the Jews Which, were already like, dead. You know, what a joke. What a hilarious Which joke. Which I think is what... But... Heroes, but had, <laughs> what we needed. The POW camp had nothing to do with the concentration camps. <laughs> Those yeah, crazy, right. inept Germans. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think people would have gone with comedy and Holocaust. That just wouldn't have worked. No, I guess Maybe not. Maybe it wouldn't. Camp Maybe it would in 2019, though. Maybe it wasn't a Jewish production. I don't even know. It was meant to be satirical. Let's have a look. You can't Verna Klemperer. Verna Klemperer played Colonel Clink on the show Hogan's Heroes, which I used to watch every afternoon. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Every afternoon. It's hilarious. They had the bed that mm. you'd raise the bed, and that was their like most mm. obvious possible escape route. Like, but you no, know, middle management knows nothing. Oh man. <laughs> It was such a funny show, and I really liked it. Uh, yeah, it was a good show, man. Yeah, totally. but let's let's see if it was. Let's see um, Hogan's Heroes production. Yeah, let's get and some see, facts. Yeah, facts. How long did the show run for? What, between well, let, what? let's get some facts. Yeah, some basic. Let's ask Jeeves for data. a second. Didn't Hogan end up becoming a porn star? I think he was a porn star before, before the show. Hogan's Heroes? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was in porn before Hogan's Heroes. Yeah. yeah. He's a pretty good, good yeah, looking Hogan fella. A a confusing it with Batman. Are you? No. no, no, that's a Hogan thing. Not even confusing it with uh, Kevin oh, Costner. Who uh, are F Troop? Is there any porn actors in F Troop? F Troop. Uh, I didn't watch. No, that I don't want to just track that. Let's stay with Hogan Heroes because I think we've hit a cultural nub here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A node of yeah. sorts. A node. No, exactly. When did this show run? Because like we all saw it as kids, and we're not so yeah. I I have a feeling that it was in black and white too. By the way, some of it was in black and white. Did you see some dad's army? Dad's army was the same. So maybe it's like a dad's army. Maybe it's a dad's army era. Yeah, but that that shit was on when I was a. 1960 like early teenager I yeah they were reruns man well of course so it wasn't in production so let's have a look of oh, why does it keep coming up with hogan's heroes march i'm not so good with jeeves okay 168 episodes so oh, yeah. how long it ran for 1965 to 1971 so six years okay. pretty cute cool. yeah it started in the 60s which is the black and white then and then it, just it became time. color, just like Dad's Army. Mm -hmm. Just like Dad's Army. That it, went through the whole flower power regime. True story. CBS like Network. Mash, same kind of era. Yeah. Werner Glemperer. And Bob Crane. That was Hogan. Bob Crane. I remember that flashing up as a title card. Bob Crane. Bob Crane. And I, oh, I remember all these things. Holy shit. It's well, such a Well, that is trip. a lot to milk out of that scenario because it was all shot in the same, as you were saying, the same... Same room. Room, Basically, more or less. In one barrack. There was always like an outside camp. shot where the Jeep would come up. Yeah, yeah. And whatnot. And then they yeah. squeezed 168 yeah, yeah, yeah. episodes out of yeah, that. Yeah, they did. Yeah. And it was a good show. Ooh, you know, there must have been how good the actors were. 
I guess they must have ripped themselves up quite a bit. That's how good the actors were. If you've got great actors, the background Production. doesn't matter and, as much. And let's look at the actors because who were the big characters there? Like who stands out? I mean, I mean oh, it's dude. not like Mass where you got the cross dresser and you got Schultz the, was Jewish. You got too. the hot nurse. Oh, was she, Schultz was Jewish. Uh-huh. Leon Askin, who was Burke Holto, I think he might have been one of the generals or something. And then some other fella, Hochstetter. Who I've never Hofstetter. Hot Hock Hock Hotch Hotch. I can't speak fucking German. We're Jewish. <laughs> yeah. So furthermore, blah blah blah. The Wunderbar. Jews. Oh man. Not only were they Jewish, but Klemperer, Clink, mm. Banner, Schultz, and the others were Jews who had fled the Nazis during World War II. Oh, right. They were actually there and they're That's Jews. So cool. They're Jews that fled to America, I love man. That. So you asked they me. All got together you asked me was a Jewish. Was it a Jewish? You asked me was a Jewish. Was it? Was it a Jewish? God product? loved the Germans, but you know they were wounded at the time. Was it? And they got together and collectively went. Was it a Jewish production? You asked, and obviously the answer is yes, man. Obviously, those four. Massive, like, they're, they're TV comics. They're really massive. I wonder how uh, much they... And their legacy is huge. So How that much is was production. the uh, Holocaust addressed so, as such throughout the 168 airings of the episodes? I mean, it wasn't. I That's not what I'm no. trying to say. The whole show was just about the... Taking the piss out of the, the Germans. P-A-W's the whole show was about taking the piss out of the Germans and it was made by Yeah, Germans. The, these Germans are these incompetent... Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just like was, uh, yeah. these ludicrous characters that are oblivious to that was the, the machinations thing. of and these smart-ass Americans that are mm-hmm. POWs. And they, yeah. You know, they waltzed in, apart from the fact that... I don't know. I mean, that Americans... Like, we're quite happy to sell war machinery to the Germans throughout the Second World War. Yeah, and they yeah. still do that shit. Well, there they, are, they, there's they, American they companies play. that still sell Not weapons to... American companies that sell weapons Germans to... Germans made their own weapons. Well, largely. They actually were the innovators. They had the, Very much they so. Had the Panzers, which was the most I mean, modern yeah. tank at the time. That's right. They had the... Um, Incredible innovators. The, the, uh, An aircraft... What's submachine gun called? Uh, it starts with L. I'm even not like it, but the jerry can. A Luger. The Luger's jerry the can. Luger? Luger's the pistol. Luger's the Luger, pistol. Yeah. Yeah, Luger yeah. pistol. And they also had a submachine gun as well. But, I mean, the but Russians are very the, um, impressive with their tank production as well, you know. Yeah, clearly the Germans were very, uh, I mean... They're good engineers. Incredibly so. And, the, and they, ironically, the, um, their best scientists were Jews. Mm-hmm. That Einstein, fled the place. the most famous Einstein. one. It's like... Um, it was this... Oh, they. I mean, it's like this amazing miracle. To me, what amazes me about early 20th century Europe was... The rise of the Jews, like the impact on culture and technology, it's just like from the ghettos, it's, it's a phenomenal story. And then this, and the Jews, can we talk about the Jews? Yeah. Seems a bit deep. Go as deep as you want, dude. I mean, <laughs> like, where does that resentment of the Jews come from? Resentment of the Jews? Yeah, from... Then, From what Germany? Say well, Germans. It was it the, was rife in Europe. Or wherever it, wherever it, you it may really say. It really was rife. Well, well the, in, in the, the anti in, the the anti-Semitism. I, I can answer can Dave's I, question. Yeah, but I'd like to offer a little bit of insight before you do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, that of course you do. Anti-Semitism was rife in Europe. That's why since the 1300s. Yeah, or 1200s, that's mm-hmm. that's, mm-hmm. that's part of that's part of pogroms against the Jews. That's yeah. part of why the Germanation Germanation. German concentration camps where they literally melted Jews mm. through their skeletons in pits. Um, Six million of them. There's there's a reason why they were able to get away with that while the rest of Europe just kind of uh, didn't notice. is because this anti-Semitism was a real problem. It really contributed to the rise of the Nazis. Yep. 
But anyway, Rob, you had something to say too. Oh, Dave, what was your question again? You said um, no, it was what, like, contributed, uh, what contributed to it? Um, I think that's what your question was. What contributed to it? A couple of things. Um, Christen, Christendom, or the Holy Roman Empire, after Rome became Christian, um, they had a theory or an interpretation, like you've talked about historiography in the past, how people read history. They read the Gospels as though the Jews were responsible for killing Jesus. Yeah. So that's where mm. the European anti-Semitism comes from, kind of at its root. Yeah. Um, but but even that, that goes against the Bible, though. There are the Bible, other elements. The Bible does what, what not the teach Bible anti-Semitism whatsoever, New Testament or Old Testament. You will not find any anti-Semitism whatsoever. So, um, so it was um, actually the Pharisees okay. that were blamed I for the question, killing of... Yeah, that's right. Of Jesus, not the Jewish people. Oh, which yeah. is a specific Jewish sect. And all the Abrahamic mm -hmm. promises. If you're a, a full Bible believer, all the Abrahamic promises, like what you're talking about, the wealth mm. and the, the land. Promise people. And the, and the blessings. Because mm. that's where the Jews stem from. They've always, I don't, God's oh. never cancelled that promise. No, that's right. If you're a believer in the Bible, that is. That's right. So well, if you're a Jewish, if you're a Jewish... Yeah, and, and like, because like Jesus is maybe at best an important prophet, but like it all stems and from Jewish. Abraham. If you're Jewish and you're looking for, that's the irony, is that you're not looking for the second coming of the Messiah. If you're Jewish, you're looking for the first coming because the Messiah hasn't come yet yeah, if you're Jewish. And then there's, these Jews have this like tremendous tradition of like, um, uh, Learned um, back and forth discussion, like, like uh, metered rational discourse. Like the Jews are renowned for it, like mm. contemporary Jews, and, and and that's right. You've got these like thousand years of pogroms against the Jews in the um, in Europe, and like and he, here are these people that people of the book, like uh, that have this tradition that they. People of the book of the Christians. If well, you're talking Quran, that's Jews. what Christians referred to. Well, the Quran, the Quran's somewhat later. Because that's different kind of anti-Semitism, the Middle Eastern version. It's different to the European one. Yeah, but they're, they're all Semites. Mm. Yes, yes. Uh, Forget Muslims what talking about. Jews are very but closely like, related. Like the Jews' persecution in Europe, and then they're confined to, um, like... Their squabble is much older. That goes all the way back to Ishmael and Isaac. The, Ishmael and Isaac. The Muslim Jew thing. Muslim Jew division. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Ishmael and Isaac. That's and Isaac goes the, back to. That's yeah. right. That's right. Much much older. Because Ishmael is the, yeah. But then, Islam, came about in the, sixth century A.D. Yep, that's correct. Yep. You know, Six seventy something around there. Something like that. Yeah. But, 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 who knows much about uh, not for me Muhammad's life like not much like um, like even then even with a Muhammad let alone Jesus let alone going back further the history of the Jews or whatever or Buddha or whatever are you casting a spell on me I'm just saying no, he's casting a spell on himself actually what I'm saying he's in is Saudi Arabia right now and he just said Muhammad no, but the degree of... Oh, yeah, you didn't... Big trouble. What no, is but it? You're I, shaking you're it up. No, but I live, in, I live in Australia and I can speak freely. Yes, you do. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. I'm just, I'm just with, having with, a joke. With respect for people, but like... Um, but do you want to play serious. my bass? Have you played my bass before? No. I was going to talk about Muhammad. That bullshit yeah, does no, actually fuck Muhammad. Happen. Muhammad's a piece of shit. Fuck religion. Religion's a piece of shit. You guys hey, have I had a really good I remember what I was going to say about Muhammad. Yeah, yeah, play it. Jeremy's burnt out. Can I just put this here? No. Jeremy's no more yeah. religion. Yeah, uh, I'm, a, I'm I'm jaded with this whole religion. Not even Muhammad. No, are we talking about Muhammad? Fuck Ma well, are fuck we gonna Muhammad? Are we gonna peace be upon his corpse. <laughs> I don't give a shit. Mm. Oh, fair enough. Are we gonna talk about music and, and Jesus? You know, peace be upon his corpse as well, right? That's uh, well. This is what I was gonna say, this, right? That's how I feel. This and it's like, um, um, you know, I've had what? That actually, if you look at it, the historical evidence. Well, the life of Muhammad is 
very thin on the ground. Oh, and really? Really? Oh, my God. Some other guy that claimed himself to be the prophet, the holy prophet, some other dude that did it. I don't know. It's I'm just, just saying. And, and same it's, with this. It's 600 years later from Jesus. People thing. It just gets on my nerves. Actually, I How don't. How many actually, chosen people are there, and which chosen people is actually chosen? Well, precisely. Maybe they're Jess. all chosen. It and I think this is the yes. point. Yes. This is the point. I'm gradually circling. Like, all chosen. This is where I'm trying to. One. You've identified the very point that I'm eventually spiraling we'll down fucking to. Fucking spiral around to it. Okay, I'm about to put out some anti-Semite. Fucking propaganda. Anti Semite. Yeah, I'm propaganda. gonna I'm gonna go like um anti Jew. You, yeah, what I'm anti chosen people, so I'm anti yeah. Jews being chosen people. So this is where we're spiraling towards. There's no such thing. Everybody has been chosen. Everybody's been chosen, so nobody's been chosen. Everybody it's like is when, a when you get into school, like we went to school in the 80s, right? And all the kids, if in you run groups. the race, you get a ribbon. So the ribbon doesn't even matter because we've all got ribbons. So stop pretending that there's something right. better whether or you're something a, whether worse. You're, it just drives me crazy. Well, in and out a Christian, a Muslim, just or drives a Jew. me crazy. Whether they walked a, into a bar and they fucking killed each other. Whether What's you're, your story? Whether you're a Christian, a Muslim, or or a Jew walked into a bar and they killed each other. What's your fucking those story? Three things: Christianity, yeah. Islam, or Judaism. Walked yeah. into a You're bar. All cousins of. They Adam. fucking yeah. killed each other. Adam. Yeah, this Adam and Eve. No, thing. but that we, doesn't make any sense. Hang at on, all. but Jess, like this is a topic that you know much about, and then yeah. Rob and I want to get onto. Rob, yeah, but let's talk music. This is boring me. All right. We're about to go into Muslim, Jew, yeah, and Christian territory. Me. Jeremy, oh, okay. well, Jeremy has been wounded. You're getting controversial. I'll join in on a controversial conversation. No more of this. Um, well, got I've only got wounds. plain vanilla rationalist arguments to make, so we can just talk music if you prefer. But I was getting quite I'll hot. I'll let you finish your point. I was getting quite hot for the. Okay, here's my main point. But get to the point. And I, I will. Okay. Get to the point. Both of you. Are. So despite <laughs> despite which the 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 whole Muhammad story historically purportedly occurred in. 670, whatever, and the whole Jesus story happened in like, I don't know, three to no, zero. 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 Okay. <laughs> both those stories. It depends on who you choose to believe. Both my, both those stories. I think it might have been and this is my single six. point. This is my single brief point. Both those stories, despite their 700 years difference historically, are largely lacking in any historical. Um, um, Collaborating evidence, mm. and so there's very little historical evidence surrounding either of those two people. Should they be even historical in the first place? Same with Bodhisattva and their events. Or... Well, that you, then you're going back another seven hundred years. Yeah, you know, and and more or less, the, the, there's a, a, a more or less an equivalent level of historical evidence in terms of collaborating evidence surrounding those things. And I guess it's like the promulgation of ideas that we're talking about. Then we are talking about history. I don't know, man. I think there's more evidence. I think there's more evidence of Jesus of existing. No, there's not. There's than that, what books. there is. I want to hear what Rob says. I want to hear what Rob says. I'm sorry. I'm going to move the microphone. I think there's. I think there's more evidence of Jesus existing than any of us three put together. Okay. All right. Well, hundred percent. You have just you landed on one of my David Gilbert in a thousand years. No, they won't. Fuck no. No. Now things are getting interesting, Rob, because, like, I completely concur with you. Jesus is clearly a more significant cultural figure than myself. Mm. And, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. That's the sort of derision that that hundred percent comment deserves. But, um. Historicity of Jesus is one of my amateur favorite topics. So if you guys want to kick on about that, oh. I'm ready. Oh wow! How is that? Oh. How has that become one of your favorite topics? Well, I came across this guy. I don't get Richard. Oh, I wish I could come up with a second name. Marx. Like yeah, it more or less might be. He looks similar to Richard Marx. He's got a very similar look about him. He's got curly hair. I'm going to find out this guy's name. And you know what? He's, fr he's a sort of fringe academic. And he's got this, like, um, 
theory that uh, Jesus was an entirely uh, mythical figure that's been created. Mm. Now, I think there's very good arguments against his argument. I think his argument is probably like 27% possibly true. And I think that the mm. counter argument that Jesus is Jesus of Nazareth was, was a real that person. lived in the Galilee yeah. was like an actual person. I think there's strong... Um, it's way more probable, is what you're saying. It, 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 in my uneducated view, and this guy's uh -huh. more, more informed than me, but mm -hmm. like, as a consequence of following his arguments, I've become quite informed on, um, yeah, the historicity, historicity of Jesus' arguments. And um, I can lay some facts on you if you guys are at all interested. Please do. Well, for example, like, uh, so how do we know Jesus? From what references do we know Jesus? From uh, Mark. Well, okay, so you've got the Gospels. So the go Mark. Four Gospels, Jesus. that's it. Gospels. Mark, Matthew, Gospels. Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John. Mark, Matthew, so Luke, and John. So the Gospels were written in about, well, our earliest remaining um, examples of the Gospels are about 300 AD. Yeah. But there's very good evidence to suggest that they were written about 150 yeah, and that they were Matthew. I think Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is probably the historic historicity of it, mm -hmm. right? So these all were written hundred yeah, yeah, years after, after, after Jesus's yeah, nope. purported life, right? And they're the all written in. They're the all scholarly written scholarly in in a language. They're all the written in Greek. Would suggest they're written in Greek, mm -hmm. all right? So, okay, for example, like say, take um, what's that? Area 51, mm -hmm. imagine that there's a story. So we're living in the modern world through all our te technologies, video, um, um, all our modern understanding of science, or whatever. So the story, Area 51, like someone found some foil mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. and then within a generation that's a, that's or two, yeah, yeah. this How entire myth has arisen. Mm -hmm. all right? And that's 50 years in the modern world. I'm talking about... Fucking Sinai in two thousand years ago. Right on. I uh, hear you. Now, I so hear you. what is the actual first reference to Jesus? So that's in Paul. Paul of Tarsus. Paul's letters were written first. Is that what you're saying? Yes, Paul's letters were written in about thirty AD. That's why I disagree ah. with you. One hundred and fifteen years, because well, Paul's the first reference. Saint John was Paul, ninety Paul, years Paul old when he died on the island of Pat Patmos, and he wrote the last book of the Bible, Revelations. Uh, Paul was crucified as well when he was about 50 or 60. So that's this is about, good shit. That's about 20 years after Christ. So you're looking about 50 to 60 AD that after the Gospels, those books were written and then well, finishing with Revelations when John was 90. No, we're talking about 50 and 60 is when Paul of Tar Saul of Tarsus wrote. We're talking about 50 or 60 AD. St. Paul. St. Yeah, Paul. The, the, yeah, the evidence, 50, the, yeah. the actual 50, scientific no, evidence. Not 115. The actual, no, no, yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah. about, the no, actual scientific we're not evidence. saying about the 115, I'm talking about, I'm referring to the Gospels. Yeah. But the now, Gospels were yeah, now there's Paul. The Gospels were written later so, than Paul was writing, is what Gilbert, don't that. you don't believe that? No, that's true. But like, uh, as far as we know, that's true. That doesn't line up with the context. Mm. Doesn't make any sense. No, but, whatsoever. but, but it is. No, if you want to talk about yeah, the first it. reference to Jesus, no, no, because and we're the talking later, about the later books reference the. Gospels. No, but the, the origin of the Christian after the gospel. No, but the origin of the Christian church is, is Paul. Is Paul right? Some Paul stories. It's the testimony of Paul, and Paul. Paul was a persecutor of Christians. Mm -hmm. so yeah. The story yes, goes. He was a Pharisee. He was a Pharisee. He was a chief oh. Pharisee, actually. Well, he was a chief he, I knew he was a chief, but I didn't realise he was a Pharisee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he, was, he was a Christian killer. He, I knew he was a Christian killer, but yeah. I, as he I was said, clearly, I knew. That was his mission. He was clearly... Yeah. Apparently, he was a tent salesman. Right. And uh, so he was a, a tent salesman. That's all right. He, Jesus he was a carpenter. Yeah, yeah but, but he was a tent salesman. He was considerably higher up in the hierarchy. He was like potentially from the Pharisee sect, where he was from a high-level Jewish sect. And he travelled around, so he's from Tarsus, which is Paul of Tarsus. Uh, yeah, I've heard, fairly, I've heard that phrase, Paul of Tarsus, uh, supposedly. Mm. So, from what we can know from of Paul's life, 
But like, he was called Saul at that time. Saul. Saul of and Tarzan. so on his moment to Damascus, he changed to the Paul. The road to Damascus, yeah, I know that that's, so the, had, I know that that's the story. So he had been prior here to for a, like a, a prosecutor of Christians on, for the Jewish elite. He was like a judge that would cast judgment on mm-hmm. people that were Christians. And, 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 Heresy. And he would, he would, um, really? he, would mm-hmm. he was a respected man. Uh, like a, um, like what functional evidence, what evidence do you have of this? Stone. What's that? What evidence do you have that this is true? Oh, Stone. like I, I can't attribute much of it. Well, all we mostly have is Paul's writings himself, but we've got his letters to Corinthians. Oh, yeah, that's right. To, I've read, I've read the New Testament a couple of times. Yeah, so, so I guess Paul's life is like mostly attested from these a few times. These, these letters that he You've sent and letters that he. As well. Returned. Sorry. Oh, the, the, there's this, there's this, there's this repository of um, letters that supposedly are Paul. Not all of which are attested to Paul. Like there's about many of which are now historically disputed. Yeah. But then you yeah, have these uh, letters come back. So Paul's life is relatively well attested in terms of a person living in that era. Mm. But like um, and administrative documents. Yeah, yeah. So I guess that we know priest. Paul from. Oh, really? We know Paul yeah. from these writings. That is, but what? There's like um bureaucratic documents that he wrote that didn't make it into the Bible. Is that what you're saying? Bureaucratic documents, yes. Yeah. But why would you put that Not, in the Bible? Not yeah, many, of course, of course. But I'm bureaucratic right. documents don't I mean, survive. Yeah. And, <laughs> as a thing, right? Paul, like what survives oh, sorry, is facts. Saul, Saul what was here on is Friday. Copies of, copies of texts in, in clay fucking tablets. Bureaucratic documents. I thought that's what you were saying. You're uh, not going to put bureaucratic documents. In why the would Bible. you put it in the Bible? Jeremy I'm just asking arrived they, at three p.m. I'm just asking if they still exist somewhere. No, yeah, I know, Joe. Yeah, but can it's you like, help him understand? No, no, no I need, what but, I'm but, you, but it is very naive, Jeremy. No, we, I'm saying there's we, other evidence. We're right. just going to hang shit on you because there's other like, evidence uh, from doctors. Please, please, please. No, because the idea that like, um, who was it? Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate's like. Um, um, administrative documents, mm. it, like mm. are sitting there in some they're fucking well, yep. cavern. Are in they? Some club mm-hmm. to, they're not. They included the bureaucratic documents in the Bible. No, the Romans. No, I'm just saying the that Romans were very the good. The idea at documents. that say 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 so if you're going to test, have a bit about that. Suppose we're questioning if Jesus Christ, the person, ever lived. Oh man, I wouldn't. I think it's it seemed to me it seems no, too suppose, obvious that he did, but I know that people do. No, but. But, but people might imagine that there's like some like um, underground like cavern where there's like a bunch of clay tablets where there's like Pontius Pilate's fucking notes. Yeah. Coins. That, that yeah. shit doesn't yeah. exist. All right? There's Coins no, do. Yeah, there's yeah, no administrative yeah, document. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah, yeah. That stuff right? gets shredded. What there is is every Christian attestments. Tax time every year they shred the bureaucratic documents. We're, we're talking about there's like a 5th century thing that's purportedly a copy of a Thing, which is yeah, 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 yeah. A copy yeah. Of okay, cool, cool, cool. I hear There's you. a I limited hear number you. of... Yeah, so, thank you. If you're going to... That makes a lot of sense. You know this stuff. Like, you're putting it in totally new ways. That's great. Yeah, I mean, like we've got... Studying shit. The Nag Hammadi, and we've got the Dead Sea Scrolls, these are yeah. discoveries, which mm-hmm. are, are give, shine a light on mm. um, the religious practices. I used to have a book about that. In this he knows a fair bit of shit. Back when I was Histori- I'm impressed, actually. Historicity of Jesus, it's a thing. Yeah, yeah. And I, for one, would come down on the side that Jesus was came from Galilee and was a real dude. It was like a, like a young fella from the country with the gift of the gab. Yeah, they had yeah, the yeah. right idea. Had a lot of, a lot of big dreams. Yeah, that's my that's had my a, version had of a Jesus. Lot of big dreams. Right? Plenty of those floating sto- around. He had a story <laughs> or two to tell. Well, there's one in Kingaroy now. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. What's his name? Why don't we just go fucking hang out with him? Oh, I would, man. I asked him to hang out with me. Nah, I'm still waiting for a text. We're, we're having a bit more fun here. But raining fish is a bit more memorable than gift of the gab. See that, Dave? That chord is called shit. That, 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 you know what that is? I don't know. That's called the devil's interval. Is it? Is that a technical thing? 
Are you serious? It, it's also called the tritone. This. Yeah, in in classical music for hundreds of years with the the church and everything, you weren't allowed to use that oh, interval. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. called the devil's interval. You're fucking shit. So that's, I'm not. That's true. Holy shit. I just put hey, my hey. fingers here. What we've got to do is just a little... To make the sinking a little easier. Oh, yeah. well, keep going. Keep going. I just put my fucking fingers here and Dave said I've played the fucking devil's chord. Oh, yeah, that's a tritone. Yeah, right, tritone. Right. Tritone sound. That was your natural inclination, was the yeah. tritone sound. Oh, God. So the first We're album, doomed. The first album you bought was Funhouse, right? Doomed. Hey, who... Who the hell picks up a guitar and plays the fucking devil's chord? Devil's chord, chord straight what the up. Fuck? This this sound. You're spooking me, Dave. This sound, this sound is the reason why Hal and Wolf's mother divorced him from her life. She I don't even her know how to play. Out of her house. That's my excuse. Because he I don't know how to play. played the devil's music. Mm -mm -mm. This is a true story. This is a true story. Check it out. Um, the Hound Devil on Somebody the way. The Hound Wolf story. You need your microphone, dude. Let me. Oh, microphone. Okay. So let's make it start again. Uh, no, yeah, yeah. So what are we doing? Top fives. That's yeah, let's start with that. Top fives. So top fives in yeah, terms going? of favorite bands. All right. Top five bands. Well, let's just go around this circle. Okay, so we're going to clink. Sorry, I keep putting my dick in your face. It's, it's I hadn't thought, thought of it that way until now. The three way clink. Uh, triple clink. We're, we're beginning. Yeah, and let's. Colonel let's, Clink. Let's actually. Colonel Clink. clink. Use your right hand, you Colonel clink. clink was a Jew. We're not going to click together unless you guys are using your right hands. Top five bands with scatology. Well, I'm Dang. the guest. Take oh. seven. I'll launch up. Uh, okay. So, favorite bands. Now, I'm going to say Led Zepp. Straight up. So, Thieves. <clears throat> of course. Beggars. Like, I don't know these bands. As a band, they oh. stole. They stole indiscriminately. Hard for me to go past that as a band, Led Zepp, Led Zepp, John Paul Jones, John Bonham, uh, Jimmy Page, Robert Plant, like, mm. that's, like, to me, the four pieces, like, um, sacred unit. So after that, huh. like, okay, so, and they're thieves and you don't need, even need to go into that, man. But, like, number two. We've uh, all heard the story. I guess the Beatles, you know. Two. Number two. All right. Oh, you're putting them in order. Yeah. Yeah, the Beatles. Like, um, so, in, you don't want to hear me talk about the Beatles. We so, all know about the Beatles. Everybody and then, like, the Beatles, uh, number man. three. Now I'm pushing it. I would say Ween. Cool. They're fun. I'm putting Ween on there. Really? From, like, this is an impromptu... I never really thought past two. Yeah, what's your favourite five bands today? Well, I'm putting Ween number three, and then like because they're a band, you know, because like a band is a band. So then after that, I might go. I don't know, like something random, like maybe Tree Like Gertu's six piece of what? the eighties. Who? Tree Like Gertu. I'm just speaking Tree random. Gertie. Who's Tree Like Gertu? I've never Tree -like heard Gertie of Tree Like Gertu is this. Um, Tree. Say it again. Tree Lock Gertu. Tree Lock Gertu. Let me spell it for you. Uh, tree Lock. Tree it's Lock it's as in Scottish Lock? T-R-I-L-O-K oh, is how you spell his name. Yeah. Tree Lock Gertu is G-U-R-T-U. And he had this six piece, oh, it was a rotating sequence of members. And that was very much like an influence to me. Um, because it was like a of well world music rhythms it was just like a nice it was a sextet and okay so next I I'm do gonna like have to, to sex the tet yes and so now I'm gonna have to mention a trio so what are the best trios of all time so you've got like um cream obviously oh, shit. 
but oh, Johnny no, Johnny Winter is trio. Is that your final answer? And Stevie Ray Vaughan. What do I say for number four? Okay, so it's at number four. I'm just gonna go Talking Heads. Talking Heads. All right, as my next band. I guess I'm going in sort of chronological order. Oh. And then, so if I'm gonna go a fifth one, if I, you've really pressed. You me, need to go five, man. Let's gonna, let's all get to five. Let's all let's let's not let ourselves stop until five. Each of us get to five. What band do I like? You know, I guess I like. I don't know Nirvana. I guess. Oh yeah, there's I've another a classic trio. three piece, man. I've got a trio. They're so good. I guess I'm a four piece man. Yeah, I'm a right. four piece man, but like I do appreciate. And you get an eight piece. I appreciate the quintet and the, and mm. the sextet and mm -hmm. the duo. Yeah, right. What was my duo? What a duo. Tree lock. Something was tree lock? Who was the trio? No. The duo. I thought it was a duo. Anyway. One was um, Led Zepp. Two was Beatles. I was kind of comfortable with that. And then you said tree lock go to. That was four, and I think who knows what I said for three. Ah, oh, yeah, right. Three got lost in it's the on ether. tape. It's on tape. Yeah, we'll we'll discover it. We'll hear it. Was back. it a duo? It was Ween. It was Ween. It was Ween. Ween. Ween's the duo. So yeah. for me, number one. So I'm I'm more a like a top five as a cloud kind of thing rather than mm. putting the five in order. Yeah. But with this question, it's hands down number one is the Beatles. Like that is the inseparable, magical unit that uh, uh, is what it is to be a pop band, that. man. I don't think anyone could contest that. John, Paul, George, and, and Ringo. Ringo. I've heard I'm of on them. first name basis with these boys. I've heard right? of them. Yeah. Well, you should have. I and have. they are easily my favorite. Easily my f actual. Rob, have you heard of the band. Oh, you've heard of the Beatles. Have you heard of the Beatles? Yes. Yeah. Or did you borrow that shirt from your daughter? Part of my porridge. Did you borrow that mm. shirt from your daughter, or have you heard of the Beatles? The Beatles were part of my porridge. Porridge. Okay, so you've got breakfast. one. Oh, no. yeah, 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 me too. My dad was such no, a Beatles Jess, man. Before you start, pat Number yourself one. on the back. you got the Beatles, but what else you got in your cloud? Rancid. Rancid, okay. Rancid will always be in my top Let's five. Let's pay that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've always Matt Freeman. On. Matt Freeman. I've always Tim Armstrong. On that one. And the other two. <laughs> Rancid. Yeah, Rancid. Cool. I'll have yeah, to check yeah, him out. Yeah, yeah. He brings it's up just, Rancid so much and every time he gets seriously, the same this is, this is from me, I'm like... Yeah, I've tried to what show age did Rancid hit your ears? They hit me at 15. So the first three records that I bought when I started developing my own taste in music was No FX, Punk and Drublick. No FX, yeah. Rancid oh, and Out Come the Wolves. Yep. And Dead Kennedy's fresh fruit, oh, yep. rotting Dead vegetables. Love them. So and rancid, rancid mm. that's yeah exactly. And like most people don't like punk music, and that's kind of half of the fun of it, mm. is that I know people don't fucking like it, but I don't give a <laughs> shit, right? It's on my list. But yeah. rancid, rancid, rancid is definitely top five. No, and rancid they must have some be. great lyrics. Or great riffs. bass player, man. Yeah, Matt yeah. Freeman. Oh Matt my Freeman. god. Have you done your five? No, that's no, two. two. He's got three to go. Just wait. This guy just Rob's, can't wait to start Rob's talking Keen. again. Rob's keen. over somebody I don't know. All right. No, someone that you don't like. No, okay. So rest like. Number three, <laughs> Parliament Funkadelic. Okay. George Clinton yeah. and the gods. You take that over James Brown? Oh, shit, yeah. I, I would. Like. Oh, man, maybe. I would. Maybe the JBs are in my top five. I didn't but mean I to can, send you screw with. No, but let's just finish the top three. No, P Funk's no, legit. Like, like, what's but after? That's yeah. P Funk. Three. Now we're pressing the boundaries, man. Because no, as I, I said, it's all very that. fluid. That was unnecessary for me. Uh, That's not part of the game. What's, then your, what what's happens your four and five? At what happens when P -funk, I start, man? P Funk number when three. When I start getting to four and five, I start. Beatles, Rancid, P Funk. No, four and five. So Toots and the Maytals. Oh. He's uh, playing. You that's, what? That's some news. Toots is on the Gold Coast this Sunday, I think. Oh, oh I'm not sure if it's this Sunday, what? but like they're, they're coming it's to coming a, a festival. Yes. I think it's Toots it's coming up. Hopefully, it's coming up. And I'm going to go. No, there's a it. there's a festival at the Gold Coast. It's yeah. called One yeah. Love. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's this yeah. weekend. Toots is coming. Toots is coming. We should go to this festival. We it's need called, to. It's we need to love. go see Toots, Toots man. We, 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 no, we need to book tickets for this festival. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Let's figure it okay, out. Okay, so that's let's, number four is Toots, and that's a great suggestion. Let, whilst, this is not my phone. <laughs> What's your number five? Probably. Oh. 
it's either free, free. I already said or free. the red hot chili peppers. Oh, chili peppers is legit. All right, so that that. So that's, let's say I'll I'll say chili peppers. I'll tell you what, Jazz, you've um, you've passed the course. Oh, thank now, you. Now, thank just, you. Just, that was an acceptable answer. Can you just look up that festival? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to hear Rob's top five. Top five. Top five. He's champing at the bit like a I can do like a Clydesdale. I think Rob would like. Would, do you want to do, do a top hey 15. hey? Do you want to do a top ten? No. Do you want to do a top ten? I want to hear the top fifteen of Rob. Yeah. I'll I'll name all my favourites. Yeah, man. Okay. However many there are. Mm-hmm. Beatles are there. Mm-hmm. That was that was um, peanut paste on toast. Number one. Sure. As a kid. Number one. The Beatles. Yep. I'm not sure if they're going to be in order of actual. Doesn't have to be in order, man. I want to hear 15 or 15 to 19. So the often. Doors. Yeah. yeah. Funkadelic. Funkadelic. Toots. Toots. Chili peppers. Chili peppers. The police. The police. Um. Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah. Mm, holy shit. Uh, top 20. Top 20. He needs a top 20. No, that's a band. 42? Level 42. Can you get to 42? Just keep going. Johnny man. Cash. Sorry. Johnny Cash is not a band. Bob Dylan. It's not a band. The Wailers. That's a band. Well, they were kind of... The other ones were kind of bands. They it was a duo. Sol- well, I know what you mean. Solos. They called themselves was- Simon and Garfunkel, I mean, not Ween. You guys so asked me what my favourite bands were. I didn't yeah. start talking about Leonard Cohen. Or Tom oh, Waits. Solos, yeah. solos with Sessionists. Uh, oh. I, I, I you can say that. The Band with Dob Billen. Bob Dob Billen. Uh, Bob Dylan. <laughs> you can say The Band with Dob Billen. Saturday. Dylan. B fifty two. That were my. Oh, that, that were my oh. virgin. That were my virgin band. Oh man. mate. That was no. my first album. Share love. That's how I broke my cookie. Share love. Tell me about your first album of V. Now we're into a hot topic. Oh, Love some... Shack. Love Shack. Yeah. Great album. That was my first album. First bit of vinyl I ever bought for myself with my own pocket money. Uh, hmm. B-52. Dead how Kennedy, good. Did I say that? Iggy you know, Pop, of course. Iggy, Iggy Pop. Pop. Iggy and the Stooges. Again, not a band. The, the Stooges is a band. Stooges, yeah. Iggy uh, and Stooges. the Stooges. Iggy and the Stooges. Oh, well, what's the best Iggy and the Stooges album? The Nirvana's second, the on second my one. List too. The second one. What's the name of the second Pearl one? Jam. That's my favourite. Pearl Jam is good. Shit. They had Fun House, and then they had the one with the song that the Chili's covered. Soundgarden were quite good too. Eh? I'm probably forgetting. I didn't like Soundgarden. Yeah. No, I didn't like Soundgarden. Really? Oh no, I didn't like Pearl Jam. Ah. But I did like Audio Slave. Hang on. Hang on. Yes. Let's just slow down a minute. <laughs> so, like, you know what? When I went to school, and this may or may not be interesting. Did you get to 15? Huh? Did you get to 15? What? Bands. I don't know, did I? doesn't matter. Keep going. I'm Blondie. Your story. Um, when you're Blondie. School. Holy shit. Oh, yeah, Blondie. keep going. Yeah. New Wave. The yeah. Cure. Did yeah. you like The Cure? Oh, the Q is on my list as there well. We yeah, totally, sure. man. I was about to put Q in my top five. Yeah, right. There you go, man. But I couldn't quite cool. do it because in the Cure, long run, sure. it Talking meant a lot to me. Too? You mentioned it meant that. a lot to me growing up. But nowadays, I would listen to Talking Heads a lot more than mm. I would listen to the Q. Okay, there you go. Okay, but I, I agree I with like you on the Talking Heads. Too. The Q had amazing. a big impact on me. Mm. Yeah, yeah. The Q was amazing. Mm. The Cure had a big impact on me, and I would still say that at my age, my stage, my phase in life, I'd still listen to The Cure over Talking Heads. Oh, talking yeah. Heads are a great music. Uh, different mood. Yeah. Talking Heads when Did you feel like? Yeah, bit crazy. Cure is more Cure like is uh, uh, feel. Uh, feel something a little bit. Yeah, yeah feel yeah. something. <laughs> did you An like? Emotion. Did you yeah, like? Did you like the Smashing Pumpkins? You know, yeah, I did. Actually, yeah, me too. I did me too, Robbie? Actually, did you like the Smashing Pumpkins? I really liked the new, no. um, a couple of tracks, but I didn't fall in love with them. Ah, oh, see, okay, I like, really I liked did. the sound I of really their tracks, fell in love with them. but I didn't fall in love with their shtick. Sure thing. Ah, oh, yeah, sure thing, man. I like, I like their guitar sound. Mm. I like guitar bands i like guitar bands i like james uh, eho was great and billy corgan was great on guitar yeah too. i mean i like uh the pixies for example. oh how good are the yeah. pixies man yeah. and like i like guitar bands sure like and, and and i appreciate that my youth was 
very much saturated with guitar bands. You know? uh-huh. And then why I didn't buy, you know, a Telecaster. And a... Yeah, so how did that come about? If you were into guitar bands, uh, you're a mad piano player. Yeah. Right? And had had you and like started pianos. learning piano before you got into music on your own? Or well, did you choose piano? Or how did that happen? I was a five or six year old and I wanted uh-huh. to be a rock star. My yeah. favourite song was I Like Rock and Roll. Roll. And I just thought Joan Jett, I thought that was the apex yeah, of man. music. And then also at the same time, sort of like Walkmans were coming out. So yeah, I was born okay. in 1977. Yeah. So, oh, really? Nice so I achieved that. consciousness about around about 1982. Right. That's when I was born, 82. Walkman. That was about the point where I, memories became imprinted on my... Okay. Oh, like, All right. You know you're I mean? making sense. How old yeah, are we? you're making sense. Like, oh, six or something. Okay. Were you guys yeah, both yeah, born yeah. in 77? When were oh, you born, Robin? Oh. Oh, yeah. oh, well, so, so you're, still, you're still the same... You you seem, know, you're, the same, you're the older brother. Our hair behaves as much the same way. <laughs> anyway, but like, um, <laughs> you fucking punks. <laughs> yeah, I oh, like, um, I guess you're eighty-two. You only absorb consciousness. Yeah, absorbs Walkman. certain things of you know, a kid, and also very much synth ruled the world when I was at that point. Oh but I wanted God. to be a Good rock reference. star. I wanted Good to reference. play electric guitar. Uh-huh. And so my parents uh-huh. said, oh, well, you can get an electric guitar when you're 10, but we'll buy you an acoustic guitar. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah. And so then here I was, six years of age, trying to play guitar and acoustic guitar, and it hurt my fingers. And it was not much fun. And right. meanwhile, my mother had bought herself this shitty piano. Oh, wow. So you'd seen your mother having fun on the keyboard. Yeah. So and in and other I was words, like, Dave didn't push past the calluses. Yes, not at that age. Why six. would you if it's no fun? Well, I haven't since. But I like, pushed past um, the calluses because playing bass is fun to me. But the piano, so the guy that was teaching me guitar at whatever level, like, and like, I was clearly barely nonplussed by this whole thing. And I was like, well, piano seems, you can just press a note and it makes the noise and it seems so much better. And he was also teaching piano, so... Oh, I, cool. I transferred to piano lessons. Cool. But then I was very much like a not very good student. But, so and then what do you mean what do you mean well like I, I didn't practice and the whole thing you didn't practice and then piano my, is the most versatile instrument man. it's great, it's it's great one versatile learn. yeah real versatile no, so I've had it sort of given as a listen? gift mm-hmm. but let me explain the background yes please do please do interested. please do so then my family and I was a little small boy um, we moved to butt fuck nowhere <laughs> but fuck no, nowhere. No, just like postcode seventeen k's out of but fuck nowhere. <laughs> yeah. You know, and like postcode. <laughs> yeah, postcode one k out. Like, you know, get one k out. I lived one, in certain one k t- out. <laughs> like the town, I lived in a town called Thangul, which had four pubs Where's and one post Where's office, that? which also operated as a. It's it's like twenty k's out of Bilawila. Oh wow. It's yeah. a satellite town of Biloela. Yeah. Holy I shit. I lived in a town called tiny. Banana. Like my whole youth was like li- living in the, like essentially like desert where there might be a cow or a hill. So, like my whole Fucker. Oh man, that's so alien. Yeah, well it was an alien wow. landscape. It was not yeah. something that really spoke to me. What am I talking about? Where you up? came from, how you started playing piano over guitar. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, like, um, so at various times I had piano teachers, and they're usually these, like, like old women that had been taught how to learn piano from nuns that lived in, you know. Yeah, the next it, shitty town. Yeah, and it used to give me nightmares. It was like, you should be learning. And oh. it, was, oh, it was like a source of nightmares for me, this mm-hmm. thing. Anyway, so at some point we moved to Mackay, which me like i look at it now as this backwater horrible fucktard place full of fuckwits Ice but at the time it down. seemed like a like a it was a revelation of like culture and um liberalism compared to what i'd lived right through. wow so this is my high school right years on. so and then like we had this shitty piano that my mum had bought to teach herself piano and like 
some point in grade seven or eight, like I bought this like um, sheet music to this uh, uh, song called Guru Josh Infinity 1990s, which turns out, anyway, that's a, another story. Infinity 1990s. And it had this keyboard solo in it and it used the C blue scale. Even though the song was oh, okay. E flat. Oh, cool, cool, and cool. And so I oh, deciphered cool. the E blue scale. That's great. And I started playing the <laughs> yeah. C blue scale a lot. Uh -huh. I'd get home from school and I'd play the C blue scale quite a lot. I'd start expressing my <laughs> angst with life in general at the piano with the C blue scale. Oh, and that's wow. kind of where my music career stems from. Like, wow, so it was a combination awesome. of. Formal training and frustration with um, the world around me. And isn't that the blues, right? Precisely. <laughs> yeah. Paid wow. my dues. Well, not so much. No, awesome. I'm actually a middle class, um, university educated. So are most people. Proletariat, I guess. I guess you'd say that I'm like. Do you own the means of production? Fuck no. I mean, I'm a I'm a little toy boat, cast in the oceans of. Providence. So, I'm like so a, what are you beating yourself up about then? Well, I'm, I guess, you know, I would say that globally speaking, I'm in an extremely privileged position and I actually have quite a lot of power to, in, in an ironic, not, not, not to overplay it or to create delusions of grandeur. I think that I haven't assumed my full power, and uh, whatever that might be. I'm not saying that I need to be Mahatma Gandhi. And okay. I'm just saying that I'm not doing or participating as much. Uh, I am in a position of um, comfort and um, knowledge, and I could be utilizing it more for, for, for the world. Because like, how? I'm not how, how would you utilize it? So you're saying you're bored. Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah. Yeah, in a nutshell, Rob. Yeah, like I could be doing more. You know, like gardening is good, you know, and I think that finding that little garden for yourself, cultivating your own relationships is the best that you can do. 100%. Cultivating you know, your own relationships. But it's someone like That's so good. Go I just need to make a mental note of that. Very rewarding. Cultivating your Definitely own relationships as it relates Denver. to your garden. I seriously love that, man. That's That's brilliant. Oh, there's like, yes, there's Keep that, going. but it's also Sorry. sort of Keep like uh, uh, influencing people at a cultural level. Yeah, you know, yeah. like uh, upping, like there's that. Like West End has that great culture, right? There's that leverage. Yeah, but I'm in amongst it, and it's becoming like a. Yeah. But there's a whole other. I'm familiar, as I've described to you guys, I've grown up in a different environment, mm. and so I'm familiar with um, other points of view. Yeah, and so maybe. Uh, I could maybe attempt to bridge. To okay, bring in some bring sort of that to West End. Poetic bring, way. Bring like um, just west of Bill, just west of Billowila. Uh. Bring it to West End, where all the goddamn action is. <laughs> like, that's, like bring it to where the life is. Bring the like that. You don't have those properties out in Billowila, and wherever if there's no Billowila's been in the news, hey Rob. Uh, with the refugees, yeah. Have you caught any of that? I've seen that, yeah. What's your take on Peter Dutton? He's a politician. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can see him, I can see him <laughs> making you uncomfortable. Answer. Gross. He's a politician. He's it's also just a Queensland ex-copper. It's just typical, mm. yeah, typical shit. Typical shit. Yeah, What's I he done? Know. I don't actually know the story. What's oh, happening in Bill Lillard? family from Sri Lanka. They've, yeah, been, I mean, they've been living in Australia for a while. They've had a couple of kids here. Mm. <clears throat> and um, because they came here on a boat, mm. they have to go back home. Yeah, even though they've assimilated into this. How long have they been here? Old mate. If they the, came here on a How long plane, have they been living in Billawila? They'd probably be That's allowed right. to stay. Well, old mate was working. No, I heard about this story about a year or two ago. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not like, that fresh. No, but it's oh, fresh days. now because they're it's suddenly a it's deporting. A revamp. Yeah, yeah right. deporting. Yeah. So these, they've got two kids. This is an old story because the kids are like three and five now. Oh. And they were born shit. here. 
Australian and, birth certificates. Oh, so the kids are fucking Australian citizens by no, right no, of birth? Really. No, they're not because they came what? by boat. But they the kids. Plane. But the they've kids? got birth certificates no. here, but they're not citizens, no. What does it take to become a citizen then? I thought it was just being born. Um, what does it take to become where you were born? So, so are these kids then citizens of nowhere? That's pretty. Yeah. That's Precisely. a lawyer Fucking question, shit, man. Yeah, that's fucked. There's probably that's lots really of different fucked. loops exactly and holes it, with that. That's exactly it. Mm. And all these people, in this backward place that it's we no call Billa Billa, that we think of these places, it is called Billa Billa. But like, mm. you know, like, like this whole town is sticking up for these people because old mate mm. is working in the um, what's the abattoir, mm. right? And just with this. Like, and the little kids growing up, born here in Biloela, they went out, did all the right things that what the government won't. No, oh, it's no good. Go and work in the advertising where you can't get Australians to go. Shit. You can't get Australians to stop eating meat or fucking criticising people that don't eat meat. Mm. Let alone get them to work in a place like that. Mm. Anyway, it's just like, um, in, in, and look at that in contrast with the special preparations that Peter Dutton made for his mates or pairs. The skull, Peter Dutton. Yeah. Anyway, it's like, um, Batman like we're, we're ruled by... Villains. Villains. We're ruled by villains. That's the word. I mean, like, we shouldn't be recording this. It's fucking awful. That's why we should be recording it. This is really... What are you talking about? Dour. Depressing. Yeah. Rob. Welcome to my world. Cheer me up, man. Cause like, mm. I love you, Rob. Tell me something. Tell me something about marijuana cultivation. Do you know anything about it? No, marijuana cultivation is one of the more boring topics in the world. Let's talk about... It's just seeds and... Which, what's, flowers. what? Seeds and flowers. Let's talk about... It's not very complex. Yeah, seeds and flowers. Let's talk about seeds and flowers. Let me tell you about the birds and yeah. the bees and the flowers and the trees and the sperm and, and the, the egg ovaries. ovaries and the <laughs> ovaries pollen Resol sperm resolve that shit buds ovaries all you got to do is mm. put the two together mm. new life mm. what's your favorite kind of what's your favorite unless, kind of music to play <laughs> what's my favorite kind of music to play I would say Chakarera. No, I would say um, oh. soul. Soul no, music. I would say soul. What would favorite you say? kind of music to play is easy, good sounding music that coheres well in harmonically. Mm. Like my favorite music to play is like Just music that sounds good and it's simple. Uh huh. Simple hence is so deceptive, reference. isn't it? Huh? I said, hence the Nirvana reference. Yeah. Very, very what was simple it? music, but it plays well. Mm. One good thing about very, music. Very, simple. When it hits you, you feel okay. That's a Bob Marley reference. My favorite music to play is definitely the blues. Oh, really? It, yeah, yeah. It just blues comes. All just, night, every night? It just comes out of me, man. Oh, That's well for you. Like no, 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 blues. The blues is much broader than 12 bar. Dude, you don't understand what you just said. What? There are plenty of bassists out there who struggle to get a groove on. Oh, man, I love to groove. That's all I want to do. Plenty of bassists struggle that's all I, to that's get like a groove on. That's like literally all I want to do in life. If you're just going, yeah, blues is easy, you got half a million, 10 million bloody bassists out there going, Ten million, the ten million fuck, bassists that are watching this you podcast. Your, fuck you and your easy. Groove. It's so yeah, man, and that's what I'm saying. That's why it's my favorite. It's because it just comes. What I'm about. It just comes supernaturally to me. Have you like, tried? That's disco? my magic. Have you tried disco? Yeah, I have actually. I did a tour with a disco rock band. How good was that? It was one of the worst experiences of my life because they were terrible humans. I tell you what, this. Okay, mate. Are you talking about? Shh. Oh yeah. No, no, no naming, but no names. Yeah. So, I tell you this, right? For a keyboard player, like you playing disco, the bassist is doing all the work. He's going, he's doing all these octaves. Fuck off with that shit. Whereas I'm just going like here with a string patch, going. 
Yeah. <laughs> Raise your glass of vodka in the air. Exactly. And all the chick and I get to look at all, you the, get all chicks. the chicks. You get all the chicks. And the bassist is fucking super sweaty because he's going mm. And the drummer's <laughs> trying to keep it at one twenty. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just sitting there playing a string line like this. And I, and that's for the entire verse. Right on. Right and then on. The chorus comes and I play those two notes. Oh. <laughs> Shit. And to me, <laughs> that has been some of the best live experiences I've had. Right on. Where I've just been oh. playing two notes on the keyboard for an entire eight hours. <laughs> oh. And the whole dance floor has gone off. Yeah. And I know that it's my two notes that are making them go off. Uh, it was like this, hold them down. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, but it's just like holding the whole fucking show together. Do you remember that gig? <laughs> I think it was your band was supporting Dillian's band and at that art I've never gallery, had a band. the art gallery. No, you were in, like, you lived with these people that, mm -hmm. and they had a band and you were their keyboard player. Oh. And we played in that art gallery in West End that's sadly been destroyed by gentrification. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm pretty sure that that night, no, it was, maybe it was the same venue, different night. Did you play before us or is, is that what happened? Or did oh, I go yeah. there? Did I go there for like a gig that you were actually headlining? I probably did. I remember seeing you in that venue and you were just like in your element. Oh, yeah. And I remember playing this gig there as well with Dillian where just before the gig started, I totally passed out. Like I was just standing there talking to my mates, listening to my mates. And then I just collapsed. <laughs> And they tried to pick me up, wake me up. Didn't work. So I went and just tried to go for a walk. I, I woke up, stumbled, and just collapsed again. I'm like, I'm okay. I'm okay. Can of corn, I'll be fine. Can of corn, I'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> just planted it. And so, <laughs> Joey Diaz, man. It's a Joey Diaz reference. Oh, right. <laughs> Who's Joey, Joey Diaz? He's the actor that said that. Can of corn. Can of corn, I'll be fine. Uh, Candy corn. Yeah. But then, um, yeah, Dill was really, Dillian was really afraid that I was going to fuck up his gig. Mm. But I didn't. Yeah, those were, those were worse times than now. I try to stay super sober and not even stoned mm. when I play gigs now. Mm. But that one, I was just so fucking wasted. I was going through so much shit at the time. That I was so fucking wasted like before that gig. No, I passed out. I literally fucking passed out. So you bombed it. Bombed it. No, no, no. I killed the gig. The Gigs gig was man. fine. The gig was fine. Oh, but the gig was fine. You yeah, the gig was fine. I passed. No, I passed out before it. So you I passed really passed out before, but the gig was fine. Yeah. How the fuck does that work? I'm a magician. Wow. Real magicians, I guess. Magicians. Yes. Hey, Rob. Here's one for you. Is a closing joke. So, how do you make a working musician complain? How do you make a working musician complain? Book him a gig. <laughs> <laughs> I can understand that. I can understand that. How do you make a working psychologist complain? Book him a gig. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand that vibe. How do you make a non-working... What am I? How do you make a non-working hobo Got a consultant? Bum? Work is work, isn't it? Work is work. How do you make a <laughs> non-working um, skeptic of the historicity of, of Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> complain? Book Free. him a podcast. Book him a cookie. Book him a cookie. Give him a cookie. <laughs> Give him a cookie. Yes, give him or a cookie. cookie. He'll eat for one give, day. Give, give him, give a, him cookie. a cookie recipe. He'll eat recipe. cookies forever. He, yeah, or he can come up with his own recipe. And Speaking of which, uh, I think we should, you know, like... So, do you have anything that you'd like to plug? Like, yeah, yeah, your teaching, we, oh, yeah, yeah, your yeah, teaching sure. business? Okay, so... Um, or whatever, that. whatever's going on, man. Plug, plug something. This is okay. your thing. Well, here's my suggestion for everyone. Um, eat whole butter, don't smoke it. Okay, that's it. That's more or less. That's the best I could come up with. No, okay, I've got I've got more important things. 
Like, uh, so <laughs> what we need to do is plant trees. That's pretty much it. That's True a great story. Idea. But your studio, come on, plug that oh, out. Oh, Bottle Bus Studios, and like, um, Can you say it again. What was that? Your children, uh, the, the, your beloved children, are entirely safe with me. They deserve. <laughs> they your and children they deserve can come. the gift of music. Um, you and they should learn well. how to I play the piano. I teach adults as well. I teach adults as well. But because there's pianos everywhere, and my children more. My my man over here. But yes, knows please, how to teach. Please restate the um. Okay, so your the name of the business is Bottle Brush Studios, and you can, Bottle Brush Studios. Yeah, you can contact me on. Oh, Don't have to say that. Okay, no. It's, uh, we'll put a link. We'll give you a link. Contact via the um the the podcast, and you can. Your children could be learning piano and um subversive ideas from me. Excellent. Every That's child awesome. needs subversive ideas, man. Yeah, it's a true story. That's why and we a little give them bit to of teachers. Stick, as well as, <laughs> as well as carrot. Slap them on the fingers. As well as carrot, you know. and love, you know, and fear, but mostly love <laughs> and faith. Faith, I love to faith. And, and I don't know. Oh, Dave, you're a beautiful soul. You really are. I'm not sure about. That. No, it's true. <laughs> it's true. You're a beautiful soul. Uh, I thanks, like you. Thanks, Jeff. That's why I asked you to be here. Oh. Grow fruits, fruits, people. Mm. Grow fruits. Plant a garden. Music, your garden. Plant a garden. Your, your personal relationships. Yeah. Mm. Grow fruits mm. in your relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, make someone a coffee. Yeah, man. That's that's true fruit. All fruits. Right? Be kind to others. They'll be kind to you. Grow. Be kind to others because it's worth being kind to others. Tower off. Wisdom from the couch. We're done. I need to piss. Right. We're out. Done. That was gold, gentlemen.